Good day, Grade 12s. My name is Karen Mazzucchere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. I've written Economics Grade 12, Grade 11, and Grade 10, and I publish Business Studies Grade 11 and 12. And I also have other things that I give out for free in PDF formats. Uh, you can let me know if you need any of that. I'm also wearing one of my brands. Awesome. Um, I'll tell you more about it, but not in this lesson. So today, in today's lesson, what we're looking at is a monopoly. We want to look at profit and loss for a monopoly. We want to see uh, what uh, happens for us to say a monopoly is making a profit, a monopoly is making an economic loss, or whatever the case is. Okay, so to get started, um, we see here we have uh, a revenue schedule here. We have numbers from one quantity actually from one to nine and we have price, we have total revenue, we have average revenue, we have marginal revenue. Okay, so to look at each price, yes, it's determined by demand, but uh, then the next one, total revenue, we say price times quantity. The next one, marginal revenue, change in TR divided by change in Q. The next one, average revenue, TR divided by Q. Okay, so let's see uh, like how they go in this uh, revenue schedule and and we, we we have this revenue schedule as you see I'm not going to talk about it number by number but you can see that uh, our price is going down and you can see that it's going down at the same rate as our average revenue and you see that it's not the same as marginal revenue and you know that in case of a perfect competitor they are the same okay we're going to talk about why it's the why, why it looks the way it does and, and the total revenue goes up and it begins to decline. Okay, now let's have a look. So this being a monopoly, uh, we have obviously a demand curve that we are expecting to see a demand curve that's down or sloping because probably that's what you have been taught. But let's look at it. How does it slope downwards? Okay, so if uh, one unit is sold, it will be sold according to my graph at 20 rand. Now, the second unit cannot be sold at the same price uh, because our demand curve is for the entire industry and it's downward sloping. So if we go to our second unit, our, quantity, uh, our price will drop to 18 and then drops to 16, it drops to 14, it drops to 12, it drops to 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, like that. And then we have our demand curve that's downward sloping. Now, is there anything that looks exactly the same as our demand curve? And the answer is yes. Okay, let me get my pointer there. And that is our average revenue curve. And you see, and it's also because if we calculate, you can do it manually if you want. But if you say TR divided by Q, it will be 20 divided by 120. It will be 36 divided by 2. It gives you 18. It will be like that. So take this number and divide by whichever number it corresponds with on the quantity axis. You will get average revenue. Right. So we have AR going down as well. So D is equal to AR. We can conclude with confidence. Now the next one would be marginal revenue. Now if you look at marginal revenue, we say the formula is change in TR divided by change in quantity. So our TR changed from 0 to 20, it changed by 20 units, and our quantity changed from 0 to 1, it changed by 1 unit. So this change divided by this change, it gives us 20, because 20 divided by 1 is 20. Then we went also from 20 to 36, that is a 16 units change. So 36 minus 20 is 16, 16 divided by 1. And why are we saying divided by 1? Because from 1 to 2, we change by 1 unit, change in quantity. Now that gives us 16. And then we check again, it changed from 36 to, to 8, 48. That's a 12 units change. And that divided by 1 gives us 12. So that's why we are having it like this. And why is it that then this is not equal to that? Because each additional unit is sold at a lower price. So there's no way they can be equal. Why then is it equal in case of a perfect competitor? Because each unit is sold at the same price. That's why they are equal. And it cannot be any other way. 
right so that being said let's now take these numbers and construct a curve so we do that by you see my dots going down and then until we have our marginal revenue curve in green right this brings us <coughs> to why our demand curve is equal to ar and why they are not equal to mr let's look at the type the first type of profit that we are going to look at so as usual we have our price axis we have our quantity axis then we have a downward sloping demand curve like the one we drew in the previous slide and then we have our downward sloping marginal revenue curve which is not equal to d and not equal to ar then um, we then apply the profit maximizing rule to determine the quantity so the rule says a firm should produce at a point where mc is equal to mr so we don't have a marginal cost curve so at this point in time we don't know how many units to produce but for us to know we need to construct a marginal cost curve now we did now it intersects at mr at some point let's call that point point e okay now from that point point e we then go straight down and then we have our units 10 so 10 is the quantity that this monopoly should produce and why not 9 because it won't maximize its profits at 9 why not 11 it won't maximize its its profits at 11 why 10 it will maximize its profits at 10 now like i said in my previous videos many learners say if i draw it like this they say then the price is here they forget what determines price. And if you go to the previous slide, you'll see that demand is that which determines price. So we have to continue with our line until we touch the demand curve. That will then give us the price. So in this case, the price is 10 rands. Now, is this firm making a profit or a loss? And the simple answer is we don't know. Why is it that we don't know? Because nothing tells us. The, if you remember from the first topic in this playlist not topic video in this playlist i mentioned four three things three rules or three statements whatever you want to call it the first one it was the profit maximizing rule i said mc and mr are used to determine profit maximization and profit is maximized at a point where mc is equal to mr the next thing i talked about was the shutdown rule i said a firm should consider shutting down if its average revenue is less or equal to its average variable cost as long as its price or average revenue is greater than avc the firm should not shut down the next thing i talked about was the types of profit and we say two curves are used to determine the type of profit uh, that a firm makes and we said the first one is an economic profit economic profit is when ar is greater than ac the second one is economic loss. Economic loss is when AR is less than AC. And the last one is normal profit. Normal profit is when AR is equal to AC. As easy as that. So if that's the case, where I said AR and AC, where is our average revenue curve here? Where is our average cost curve? It's not there. If it's not there, then you cannot answer this question. Now let's put it. Now we have put it now we know what kind of profit it is clearly you can see that the value of ar is 10 the value of ac is 10 10 and 10 are equal if you want to prove ar is 10 ac is 10 10 minus 10 is 0 so if we have 0 we have a normal profit and it is called a normal profit because ar is equal to ac right moving on to the next graph we start again with our axis price axis quantity axis zero downward sloping demand curve which is equal to ar downward sloping marginal revenue curve which is not equal to d which is not equal to ar then our marginal cost curve which is there to tell us how many units to produce because we want to apply the profit maximizing rule a point where mc intersects mr in this case is point e and then that gives us quantity 10 and from 10 don't be tempted to go there proceed straight up until you touch the demand curve and then that will give you a price of 10 as you can see here now is this firm making a profit or loss same answer we don't know if you know then you don't know right it is above 
cost is high what do you think this is bad news right yes cost is high common sense tells you this is not something that you want to see uh, as your graph because you are in trouble you are making an economic profit so since you are making an economic loss of five rand per unit should you shut down what if you are making this loss of five rand per unit and you are oh, what if this is 10 that 10 is 10 million and that 15 is 15 million so you are making an economic loss of 15 of 5 million rands every hour so if you have open for eight hours it's 40 million rands loss uh, in a what in a day do you think this firm should continue or shut down if it makes a loss of 40 million rand a day well if you think it should shut down then you don't know what you're talking about because how do you know because i don't know myself i don't know if you know then i something is wrong with you i don't know if this firm should shut down because i don't see where avc is in this in this graph so if there is no avc then don't talk about shutting down because you 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 are not you are, you are not talking sense anyway don't talk about shutting down i don't care what the amount is remember five million is chicken feet to big companies to some companies and and i'm saying five million because i'm trying to exaggerate i'm trying to use psychology because your brain knows that oh 40 million no that's too much now your brain is saying 40 million is too much but uh, we stick to the rules and the rules say a firm should consider shutting down if AR is less or equal to ABC. I don't see ABC here. So the answer is we have no idea. The answer is we don't know. So we stick to that. If you want to look, use emotions and say, no, but it's too much, then you are not applying the rules. Then you are going to fail the subject because we don't care what the amount is. We care about the rules. The rule says, only shut down when AR is less or equal to AVC. Right, moving on. Let's find out why we say it's an economic loss. It is an economic loss because 10 minus 15 is negative 5. And negative 5 is, it shows that oof, this is problem. So this is an economic loss. AR is less than AC. The last graph, same thing. DAR, downward sloping. MR, downward sloping. Profit maximizing point, point E. And then price not there but up there yes 10 then what kind of profit is this we have no idea why do we say we don't know because there is no ac we compare ac and ar mc has nothing to do with this and uh oh wow it's down there that's basically what we want to see this is an economic profit for sure why because AR is greater than AC. By how many units greater? By three. No, not units. By how much rent, How much money? By three rands per unit. So it's three times 10, which is 30 rands. So this firm is making 10 rand economic profit uh, ultimately. Now this could be 10, 10 million. No, no, it could be 30 million because this is just 10, but what if there's an M in front? Right, so to prove that this is an economic profit, we calculate and we say 10 minus 7, it gives us a positive 3. And then that uh, in, in, in using what I told you before, EP or economic profit, it's a situation where AR is greater than AC. Okay, so that's what we have, ladies and gentlemen. Right, to move on to uh, now sort of in conclusion. Now, in this uh particular slide what i want to talk about is um just a comparison I, i'm going to talk about monopoly and perfect now i want you to see similarities and i want you to see differences okay so now this here let me take my pointer this here shows us um, a situation where the firm is making an economic profit and why the reason is because ar is greater than ac Look at our average revenue curve is 10, our AC is seven. So we are making an economic profit, right? Now, how does that look identical to perfect? How does that look different to, uh, from perfect? Now, the, the, the identical things, way too many things here are the same, like a downward sloping demand curve, a horizontal quantity. Uh, no, 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 
Now I'm saying I'll fix that. I said a downward sloping demand curve. No, I meant to say a, 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 a vertical price axis, a horizontal quantity axis, the same numbering. Okay, fine. The numbering here is different, but we can even make it the same. No, no difference. Now, uh, the, the shape of MC, identical. The shape of AC, identical. Where are the differences? Well, the first difference is that here the demand curve is horizontal. Here it's downward sloping. And uh, here, D and AR are equal to MR. He, here, D and AR are not equal to MR. And we say the, diff the reason is because in this case, each additional unit is sold at the same price. And here, each additional unit is sold at a lower price. Okay. Now, I want to say much with other types of profit. Look at normal profit. Same thing. Uh, and, and do you see that the same rule applies? Here it's called an economic profit because AR is greater than AC. The same applies here. Here it's a normal profit because AR and AC are equal. The only difference is the way the demand curve slope. And the other difference is the fact that D and AR are not equal to MR in case of a monopoly. But in case of a perfect, they are equal. Come on, this is one of the easiest things that you, subjects you can ever, ever do. Uh, I always say economics is easier to pass than it is to fail. Because this is exactly what we ask in the exam. So how do learners fail? I have no idea. I always say, if you fail economics, you deserve lunch. <laughs> you really deserve lunch. Actually, you deserve dinner, something, you know. And, and, and we, we have to buy you some wine, you get some starters, you deserve it. Failing this, it's impossible. Well, this has brought us to the end of our lesson. And uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please subscribe to our channel. I really appreciate the channel is growing. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. Some of you will watch this in future and you'll be like, oh, it was once at 10,000. Okay, I guess then it will be 100,000 subscribers. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate and God bless.